taking you to the National Assembly to give you a sense of what to expect today as the debate is expected to begin on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, at least the report uh, that was laid before both chambers yesterday. So it's a big day, really. And like I said, we're giving it a big coverage, really, because this is very important. It talks about our leadership recruitment process, which is, I mean, the basic foundation of democracy. And this morning we have joining us on the program Dr. Paul Ananaba, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria. He joins us via Zoom on the program. Well, it's good to see you, uh, Dr. Ananaba. I mean, there's been a lot of debates, controversy, and the rest about this particular amendment bill. I'm not sure any other amendment bill has had this, you know, much drama, twists and turns. But listen to the Senate president saying that, you know, those saying they may have changed it are mischievous, misinformed and rabble rousers. And he spoke about lobbying if people want a particular section put in or not. What do you make of the totality of the Senate president's statement regarding, I mean, the issues that have been trended? Thank you, and uh, fellow Nigerians. I, I do not intend to comment on what the Senate President said. Um, he's a Nigerian, he has his opinion, and he's entitled to that opinion. Um, beyond that, the Electoral Act is so important to Nigerians. That's why you see a lot of traffic on that point. It's important because it appears to be the heart and soul of uh, uh, political uh, movement in this country. And um, everything you are going to do will be based on the Constitution and on the Electoral Act. So the experience of Nigerians in previous elections uh, would have been fueling their suspicion and all that. This is not the first time we've tried to amend the electoral act. And then in this country, you hear things on rumor, and before you know it, that rumor becomes real. So I don't think Nigerians should be crucified or called names to particularly those who feel uncomfortable with what they are hearing. But specifically, um, we have we witnessed bloodshed snatching of ballot boxes, violence. You remember in Kogi a few uh, years ago, a, a lady was born, as we told, in, his, in her house, set on fire. So these are things Nigerians do not want to continue to experience. It brings shame and disrepute to this country. We do not want to experience that. So, um, Speaking for myself, I do not think we should be talking about Electoral Amendment Act. I think we need an Electoral Act 2021. That's what I think we should talk about. And since uh, the process has not been concluded, I am of the opinion that we should be talking about an electro a fresh Electoral Act. I said this abrasively. One, the Electoral Act 2010, which is said to be under amendment, has been amended even in 2015, such that um, you see several lawyers having several um, different types of Electoral Acts at the point. So you see, you can pick up an Electoral Act, the sections are not the same, and all that. The Electoral Act is so fragile and sensitive that we cannot, we shouldn't be talking about amending this one. There should be an electoral act 2021. And in saying that, we should also be mindful of what Nigerians are complaining about. The bill that is before the National Assembly now intends to increase uh, uh, electoral uh, funding. Now, when you say 15 billion for uh, presidential election. Uh, how, how would the funds be raised? Those who will raise the fund, if it's, if, if it's not the individual that has this 15 billion, are they not going to be giving some privileges in that government, assuming the candidate wins? 
So if we are on the anti-corruption lane, that anti-corruption lane will be punctuated and perforated by such a legislation. If this bill comes to law, you need five billion to be a governor. Yes, there will be money that are funded. If it is funded, then he who pays the piper will detect the tune. I, I, I believe that the National Assembly should revisit that point. And again, transmission of uh, results. I, I, I commend the National Assembly for uh, putting in the bill uh, electoral, uh, electronic voting. But it's not about electronic voting alone. Much of the problem is with the transmission of the results. The transmission of the um, accreditation, the transmission of the results. It's at that point of transmission that snatching and most of the things are done. So I will urge the National, National Assembly to take seriously the issue of transmission of results and restore it in a fresh electoral act. A fresh electoral act 2021 period. Not an uh, amendment. Uh, Dr. Nanaba, this so conversation about... <laughs> Uh, I mean, this conversation about whether we need an amendment or a new one, I recall this is still on even with the Constitution. But, you know, still staying with this Electoral Act Amendment Bill, you say you prefer an Electoral Act 2021, and you, you've mentioned a few areas that you that's, think that's need to be I changed. Prefer. Yes, you've talked about the, uh, uh, the, the campaign funding. Uh, you've talked about the electronic voting and transmission and the rest. And, and I recall you said that, I mean, you've noticed that even legal practitioners have different copies of the Electoral Act 2010 that was amended in 2015. I mean, it doesn't that call to question where they get their laws from. I mean, these laws are gazetted, so there's an official uh, point you can get the amendments from. So do you think that will solve the question of whether we need a new 2021 Act or an amendment? Well, well, um, uh, the, I don't want to go into the issue of the government printer and the gazetting process. And uh, how many Nigerians will have access to the gazettes? I didn't say that the gazette was not, or that couldn't be gazetted once. But the letter art you will buy are the ones you see in the bookshop. And um, as a practitioner that has been involved mostly in the uh, Electoral petition. I, I, I am speaking from 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 um, from experience. You, you take off two electoral acts the same. That's the point I'm making. So I don't think that the electoral act should be. Uh, what do we lose by having it as an, an, a fresh legislation? But an amendment act will have certain issues. We'll be looking at. Uh, whether the sections were thoroughly I repealed, and if there was, if we find out that some even previous acts had not been uh, repealed, and they were not repealed by the Amendment Act, those acts will come up and become issues that we will start debating that may deprive uh, the citizens, the, 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 the candidate of their choice. Remember that we are looking for a, a, a just and fair electoral environment. That is what I believe the National Assembly is going for. By the amendment, a new electoral act. And that, that's my question. And I urge the National Association so that we go away from uh, 2010 and its problems. There have been series of Supreme Court decisions, Court of Appeal decisions, electoral uh, tribunal decisions that we we will now we will harvest into this process. What is important is not really uh, what I remember, but it is what is the final product. A situation where you are amending and uh, uh, you cannot transmit results. That's that not that to 
that will be productive because the transmission is like I said, the assembly should go further beyond transmission to say that the the, the result must be one hour, not more than one hour, be in the website of ANEC. And citizens can um, have access to certified copy within 24 hours. And uh, these, these practical things, uh, I mean, uh, uh, that come up at the election tribunals, election petition tribunals, these are practical things. So that those who are applying to write results, to cap a lot of boxes, to do all more of this, we know that they are limited. And we begin now to see a better environment, elections, and um, better results. I think that's what Nigerians are spending their tax money for in funding the National Assembly to make laws that are in their best interest. Well, there are many other clauses in that uh, in the bill that you that's been harmonized today by the uh, committee of the two chambers of the National Assembly. The one of the but there is another one that's been talked about uh, earlier, and that's about the Electoral Offences Commission. I'm wondering how significant you think that you know, will be in the scheme of things, um, given that we have electoral, some uh, electoral offenses have been committed before election, during elections, and after elections. So uh, there's that, you know, proposition uh, by the Senate that uh, if you snatch a ballot box, you can go to jail for 20 years. That's just one of several. How significant do you see that commission being proposed, or the bill has been passed by the, the Senate. How significant do you think you, do you see that being in our electoral process entirely? I see it as extremely significant. You know, many times we used to compare ourselves with the UK, US, and other. We are Nigerians. We are in Nigeria. And laws must be made to reflect society. I support an electoral offenses commission and um, I, not just in, in words or on the paper, it should be followed with seriousness and strictness. And that's what I'm saying, because um, a lot of uh, uh, speech was made by a former, well, I mean, former INEC chairman. We will prosecute, we'll do this. How many people have they prosecuted? I was happy that I, a, 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 lecturer, a a professor recently was jailed. Yes, that is just one. So there should be an elect election offenses uh, commission, a tribunal, so that people who are uh, professional election offenders will move away from it. And those who stick to it will get the wrath of the law. And even previous crimes can still be prosecuted because there is no limited time for offenses. A crime is a crime and can be prosecuted anytime. So it is significant. It is what will add impetus to the electronic voting regime we are going into. An electronic voting regime does not mean that it is foolproof and perfect. People are going to do a lot of things to manipulate it in one way or the other. So that we don't bother our burden, the, the already way down court system or uh, the election petition tribunals with electoral offenses. Many elections, uh, I mean, many electoral election petitions have been affected by the fact that, oh, you, 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 you allege fraud, you did not prove it. And you allege that uh, uh, security agency and this and that did this and that, they could not prove it. As with the limited 21 days to file your petition, 
Where will you, how will you get all that sorted out? So it goes in that in practice, that the election petition tribunal and election offenses commission working with time bound uh, proceedings will give us the best. So I support that. I support that commission. Yeah, there was something you mentioned earlier in response to uh, Kyrie's question about uh, funding the electoral process. And um, you, you, you raised eyebrows at the increments of uh, electoral funding for the presidential election, for governorship elections, and all of that. But even hitherto, uh, the ch there's been a challenge as to how election funding is monitored. The law that is being amended now, it already provides a monitoring recommendation. But there are questions around how that is even taking on board in the first place. So given that the, the, the consideration is there in the law, how do you see the implementation of that particular provision? Because they, they, there is a the concern. Perhaps what the politicians considered was like, look, we were already above the threshold anyway, so let's just increase it and make it legal. So if that is the case, question then is, how do we monitor electoral funding such that we do not do, we do less money politics and more, uh, you know, of the kind of politics we ought to? Thank you. That's the point I was making. What has been missing is an election offenses commission. The increase in the, in the funding or the monitor of funding is part of electoral offenses that have been created. If you look at it, who was, who would have, under the previous electoral regimes, who will have the, who can monitor from the House of Assembly to the presidency? How, who will monitor the, the money, the, the, the funding? So if, the, if there's an electoral offenses commission, that will be part of their duties. And so that if anybody offends uh, then they, they, will, they, they will charge such person into court. I will imagine that if you're, there's an electoral, electoral, electoral offenses commission, the, the, the days of uh, money bag in politics will begin to reduce. And that's why we do not get the best of the candidates. It is now get the money anywhere, get, get your fund everywhere, buy everything, and get into office. And part of the challenge is that now the, the bill, which I believe that provision should be dropped immediately, is that uh, INEC has no powers uh, in terms of issuing certificate of returns to any person who, who by force or by some means uh, gets to the electoral office to be sure that to, uh, to, re, to get. Uh, to get um, the certificate to get declared. We saw that happen at the last election. And the tribunals were helpless. INEC was helpless because once it's gone to tribunal, a different regime comes in. So what am I trying to say? It is important that we have this election, electoral offenses commission. They should look into funding and they should bring up uh, rules that will be made post one to the act that will ensure that funding is strictly monitored. That will bring fresh air. But that should not allow us to now say that if you want to be a governor, you are allowed to raise five billion. Five billion, when you share it among Nigerians, we don't have five, five billion Nigerians. So you will be seeing that even for the money to be raised can be shared on all Nigeria. Should we, let's take 200 million Nigerians, children to adults. If you share it, you, you can do the mathematics. You have a statistician in channels. I would like him to do the mathematics. You will see that for one state alone, every Nigerian will get some good money. That is what you are giving it to one person to go and run an election. 
And then when he wins the election, you want him to uh, operate by perfect rules. The people who brought the money, the sources of the money that was spent, what will happen to them? It becomes, election becomes an investment. And then corruption can no longer be stopped. That is what should be, should be discouraged. I tried to so, crunch the figures um, in my head. I do hope I'm correct, though. I mean, 5 oh, billion sure. naira. If you divide I, that by I, 200 million, I, I didn't do that, so much that's about 25 naira. So I no, no, it's okay. I, I try to do the crunching. If you divide 5 billion by 200 million, that's, uh, I think, 25 it, it naira each. So that's 25 naira okay, each so for, for each citizen. Nigerian, every living Nigerian will get 25 naira. I'm talking about one state. Then multiply it by the 36 states and FCT. And then you go to presidential of 15 billion women gods times mm. three. You know, uh, so it's, it's that, that, that's that, and I know that conversation is always on, and I, I think it's in, quite important. But you, you heard the Senate president saying that, uh, you know, the National Assembly should not be blackmailed. If people want certain things in that amendment, then they should lobby. And, and I imagine that these are some of the issues that uh, Nigerians want, electronic voting, talk about campaign funding, and the rest. So uh, the Senate president is essentially saying, well, you need to come to the table as it were. How, how do you see that working out, especially because there's overwhelming you know, reaction from I, I, Nigerians? I, I don't agree. I, uh, let, let me make my point clear. Lobbying is a professional job. In advanced democracy, there are lobbies. And lobbying is not a crime. But suddenly telling us about lobbying in Nigeria, we've not been um, talking about lobbying in, in that balance. My concern about that comment is that lobbying takes a while. So now that the harmonization is being done today or so soon thereafter, before the National Assembly goes on vacation, when will the lobbying be done? Are we going to do campaign after election? Is that what that is? That is end that. If we were to do that, that should have been put forward long time, so that there will be enough time to lobby. I agree with lobbying, but I don't agree with lobbying in this instance as, a, as an avenue. In subsequent things, maybe we should have association of Nigerian lobbies, and then we take it from there. But for now, <laughs> not for this electoral act. This electoral act, I, I, I urge that, um, uh, you know, I know I urge that um, we, we, the Senate President and all parliamentarians and should go the patriotic way, right. devoid of lobbying now. Well, uh, the that's another about it. Of Nigerian Maybe we'll need another bill for that association of lobbies, so maybe an agency. <laughs> but clearly, uh, we'd like to appreciate you so much for your time and sharing your thoughts with us on the program this morning. Dr. Paul Ananaba is a senior advocate of Nigeria, and he's been discussing uh, with us issues surrounding the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which is, of course, going down today at the National Assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you.